My name is John Mattos, and I um, have the uh, good fortune to have been recently elected uh, president of the RAM Alumni Athletes Association. And I also, and I took over for Jack Cap. Jack, where are you? He's been a long, long time president. He's out there in the audience somewhere. There he is. Jack, thank you for all your time and, and effort. But regardless, we have a, a, just an outstanding program tonight. We have some uh, inductees into our Hall of Fame that are just phenomenal athletes um, and still are, in my mind. Uh, one of my teammates actually is getting inducted tonight, a teammate, a former roommate of mine, but uh, I'm really looking forward to tonight's activities. And uh, on behalf of the RAM Alumni Athletes Association and our board of directors, who a lot of them are here tonight as well, um, it is really my pleasure uh, to, to welcome you and thank you for attending our 27th annual, supposedly annual, we're gonna try and make it annual from now on. We didn't have one last year, CSU Sports Hall of Fame. And at this time, uh, if my fellow board members would please stand, if they would rise, please, and we could give them a, a hand. We put a lot of time and effort into uh, trying to get this whole thing organized and off the ground and moving in a, in a good, positive direction, just like our athletic programs are moving right now at Colorado State and all the incredible things that are happening on this campus, uh, thanks to Tony Frank and, and numerous others that have uh, really become involved in changing the whole atmosphere around CSU. And I, I don't know if you've been to, the, to our athletic facilities lately. I don't know if you've walked down the hallways, but the changes that are there are just phenomenal. The Sports Hall of Fame uh, on the south side of Moby Arena, incredible. The athletics, uh, the weight room, the athletic center, the academic center. So many things have changed. Our training room, phenomenal. That it, it just, even from the time that I've left, and I was here for 31 years as a coach of the uh, swimming and diving team and uh, the ex-water polo team. Uh, but anyway, I was coaching there for so many years, and to, all this seemed to happen after I left. So I, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> and maybe it's because I left, I don't know. But... Uh, Anyway, um, we, we like to, we really like to honor our athletes that have really distinguished themselves with uh, phenomenal careers uh, in their, their sports and what they've done at Colorado State and after their time at Colorado State. So it's gonna be a real fun evening. Um, I do have uh, a few people that I would like to recognize uh, besides our board of directors. Um, sponsors for this evening's event, uh, Coors and High Country Beverage. It's, it's uh, our official malt beverage sponsor. Coca-Cola is our other sponsor for this evening. And um, I'd also like to thank uh, both Katie Cooper and Michelle Bradley who are out here for really putting this right in the back back there, this whole thing together. <laughs> Done a phenomenal job organizing everything and getting all the athletes back here and set up at the uh, Marriott in Fort Collins and really well taken care of. It's a class event. And again, I really, really appreciate you all being here. Um, I have the pleasure right now of introducing someone that uh, has been very special in my life and uh, kind of changed my life. In about 1993, she uh, came to Colorado State and it wasn't too long before she became a phenomenon. And, that, and it happened right about October, right about this time, we're sitting at the pool 
And I asked uh, Amy to get up and do a get out swim. And this is a swim that allows you to uh, get all the other swimmers out of practice. And if you make this get out swim, and it's really a hard time, it's a time that shouldn't, you know, I don't want them to achieve if possible. <laughs> so Amy um, gets on the deck and I say, okay, Amy, it's your turn, get up there. Let's see what you can do. She gets up and she swims a time that would have won the WAC championship the year before, that would have won the NCAAs the year before, qualified for NCAAs, would have made her the, the fastest swimmer in the nation at that time, and this was practice. And I said to myself, John, you better change some things up there, otherwise you're gonna lose this young lady. So she's done some phenomenal things, and I know she's had a, a setback here in her life, in her career over the last year. Um, but those of you that have followed her online know what an incredible inspiration she has been to so many people out there. She travels weekly all over the, the nation to speak to groups, to give her message that you can do things that you don't think you can. And right now, she's gonna come on up here and hopefully, uh, Give us a great evening as our MC tonight. <laughs> thank you. Amy Van Dyke and Ruin. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> He's such a nerd. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, no, I got this. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. That was so nice. Again, I know that you just stood up because you got to, you know, adjust your pants after sitting down for a moment, but. Um, also, it's funny, John always talks about that moment in the pool and, oh, it changed everything. But let me tell you what, a girlfriend would do anything to get out of practice. I would do that time right now if I could get out of practice. So, but listen, you guys, it is so amazing to be back here at Colorado State University. This is my home away from home. I love coming back here. As John said, a lot has changed in the athletic department, and I would like everyone to know that if the things were as they were now when I was swimming, I would have been more than a 12-time All-American. I would have won more than six gold medals. I just want you to know, not to make you feel bad, anybody, but it would have happened. So <laughs> it's OK. Um, <laughs> also, as you can see, some things in my life have changed a little bit. Um, I'm now blonde, so <laughs> I know. We try not to point and stare, but it's OK, right? <laughs> All right, we're not here to talk about my hairdo, right? We're not here to talk about any of this. We're here to have a great time. This night is so special. I always love being here at this night. I was fortunate enough to MC it a few years ago, uh, fortunate enough to be a part of it a few years ago, and now I get to be a part of it in welcoming these amazing athletes into such a great tradition. It is a tradition of becoming a Hall of Famer at Colorado State University, and this has been around since 1988. I wanna make sure that I get that right. Um, and it is one of the highest honors, you guys, that we can give not only to athletes, not only to coaches, but also to administrators that help us out. Um, this class of 2015, I'll tell you what, reading them, knowing some of them, this is so cool to be able to welcome them into a great fraternity, if you will. That fraternity after tonight will grow to include 160 members. So it is a very, very cool group. So um, we've also got among us some legends in their own right. Um, these are the people who paved the way in sports. It's very important to remember who came before you so that you can know how you got there. Also, in case their old gym shorts are in your locker, you can kind of say thank you. Um, so uh, I want to go ahead and have these people stand up. These are people who are members of the Colorado State University Hall of Fame already. And they are here tonight. If you could stand up, we can save our applause until the end, and then we will just let it rip, all right? Um, we have got Rams track and field coach Brian Bedard, former volleyball player Jill Bedard. You know what? Forget this. Brian, everyone clap. We're doing that. Thank you. Right on. Forget that. Thank you. And then we've got former volleyball player Jill Bedard. Stand up again, Jill. Let everyone clap for you. Thank you. All right, former track and field athlete, Sandy Fetzer. Sandy, where are you? Over there, awesome. We've got former volleyball and track athlete, Mary Harrington. 
track and field athlete Drew Lofton. We've got former football coach, a guy that came to Colorado State the same year I did, Sonny Lubick. <laughs> former track and field coach, Dale Hessel. Dell, where are you? There. <laughs> Volleyball coach, Tom Hilbert. Tom. <laughs> I always want to make Tom a Tim. Did you notice I didn't do that this time? Are you excited for me? Yay, things are changing. Boop, boop. All right. Uh, we've also got former football player and current assistant coach Anthony Hill. <laughs> Anthony. Uh, we've got former swimmer, former swim coach, former water polo coach, former current awesome studness John Matos. Former track athlete, coach, and athlete administrator, Doug Max. We've got former football player, Kevin McDougall. Former basketball, track and field, and football athlete, Kay McFarland. And we have got administrator and just jack of all trades, Christine Susamil. Yay! So just so you know, Christine, if there is ever a problem, um, if you have forgotten your swimsuit, if you forgot your books, if you forgot that you should actually be going to class, Christine's the one that helps you out there. So got to love her, right? Um, so what we're going to do now is we're here to honor some people who are coming into the Colorado State Hall of Fame. So we're going to honor them in a big way after dinner, but before dinner, what a great idea to be able to see who these people are. So when you see them having spinach in their teeth and you point and laugh, you know exactly who you're pointing and laughing at. Shall we do that? I think it's a good idea. All right, so Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have you guys walk on down the aisle. You're already over there. So here we go. We've got Katie Wagner Mintz from volleyball. Mike Newell, football. Jessica Strickland Cole, softball. Richard, don't call me Rick Cooley from Men's Swimming. We got Lori Smith Thornton, women's track and field. She was the throws. Oh my God, with arms like that, I'm going to start throwing stuff around. Holy cow. My husband's here. I'll start with him. Um, also, we've got another honoree, Clark Hagens for football. As you see, is not walking down the aisle because he is trying to drive on I-25. You all know what a hot mess that is, so he will be here in just a little bit. So, um, listen, we look forward to hearing more about these honorees just a little bit later on in the evening, which we will do. We will honor them in a way that they deserve to be honored. But right now, we would like to honor a guy. He is our fearless leader. Um, he is our athletic director, Joe Parker. Um, we want to actually bring you on up here, Joe, before we uh, start dinner. Good job, Joe. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you. You go to the big table. I'll stay at the little table. All right. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Amy. And welcome, everyone. Yeah, it's a real honor and privilege for me to serve as the director of athletics here at Colorado State University. And to have the opportunity to welcome uh, this distinguished group here tonight. Um, pretty, pretty remarkable that uh, our intercollegiate athletics department gets the opportunity to recognize six very distinguished individuals tonight. Um, you know, I was invited into this family in April, and every time I turn around, I just find just some very new, very exciting, unique things about who we are as Colorado State Rams. And, I'll tell you, my assessment in the last seven months, it's, uh, it's a fantastic place, a uh, place that's filled with fantastic people and really has probably the best combination of campus and community that I've witnessed at the six universities that I've been able to serve. And I feel really, really good about what we 
are doing here and what our future is. And I, I think that we're going to work hard to fulfill our mission, which is just simply to educate, engage, and excel. And we've got a lot of exciting things happening on our campus for all of our programs. Probably the most exciting thing that we're involved with right now is a, a new uh, stadium project. So we've got just under construction our, our on-campus stadium that will be completed in 20 months in June of 2017. So very exciting. For those of you that haven't gotten a chance to come to, camp to campus often, you can see uh, certainly this evening just all the amazing things that have occurred, the investment the university has made in its academic core to kind of build out the services for our students, and we're excited about the things we've been able to do for our intercollegiate athletics department. Um, we've got some great honorees tonight, uh, some people that have really worked hard in their careers as CSU students to distinguish themselves, and we get an opportunity tonight to really pause and, and celebrate and recognize the careers that they've had here. But I want you to consider this uh, universe of people first. Um, our alumni base is about 225,000 people strong. We have had, uh, since 1895, which was the first year that we've issued a, a, a letter for a varsity program, we've had thousands of people uh, participate in our varsity programs here at CSU. And we have, as Amy pointed out, 154 people that have been recognized and distinguished as being members of our Hall of Fame. And that is, I did the math this afternoon, that is, that is less than one ten thousandths of a percentage point of our entire alumni base. So to be a part of that group is a very distinguished, distinguished uh, level performance. And we have six new inductees tonight, which Katie, Mike, Jessica, Rick, Lori, and Clark want to welcome you to a, a great fraternity, as, uh, as Amy had mentioned. Um, exciting. Collectively, um, they'll, we'll, we'll, we'll hear a lot about what they've done individually, but I thought it'd be neat, and I asked Paul Kirk in our communications area to kind of aggregate some of the team accolades that were, that were earned uh, while they, they were students, and some of these are some of their individual accolades as well, but we had 10 All-Americans in this group, so 10 times these people were distinguished as All-Americans. 15 times they were recognized with all-conference honors. Their teams participated eight times in postseason opportunities, whether it was the NCAA tournament or bowl games. We had six academic all-conference performances from these individuals. We had one national champion, and we had one academic all-American. So a very, very special class that we're inducting tonight. So I want to thank you all for your participation this evening, and go Rams. Quickly, before we start dinner, I just want to say that Joe knows a lot about being an athlete. Um, it's really cool to have an athletic director who is an amazing athlete himself. He was a three-time All-American as a swimmer, so um, he is going to bring a lot of, um, I guess, that athleticism to the athletic department and a lot of energy that we definitely need and that we want and that we love. So everybody enjoy dinner, and we will be back in a little bit. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed your dinner. Um, that was awesome, fabulous. How about that dessert? Did anybody get to rock and roll that dessert yet? Fabulous, yeah. Good job to everybody who helped with that. So John Matos back here is talking about, um, he came running towards me when he saw me. He's like, oh my God, your Ram necklace. And he touched it and he's like, ooh, it's a skull. So I just wanna say in honor of Halloween tomorrow, I did wear my skull, his, watch, his mouth does move. Look at that. Cheap thrills, come on, people. Are you guys not drinking enough or something? Like, what is going, we got Budweiser is like a huge sponsor, let's get it rolling. For the love of God, people. I saw Hagen's came in here, that's awesome. First time I've ever seen him in his entire life without Joey Porter, ever. Those two were like Captain and Tennille back in college, right? And then not only that, then they go to Pittsburgh together, then they go to Arizona together, and I'm like, seriously, are you guys Siamese twins? Like, what the heck? Anyway, good to see you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started and we are going to honor some amazing individuals this evening. Just want to let you know that the honor of being inducted into the CSU Sports Hall of Fame is given to an individual who has distinguished himself or herself as an outstanding competitor while at CSU. This person must be in good academic and athletic standing while a Ram. Really, Hagens? You made this? <laughs> Whatever. I'm not buying it one iota. Anyway, uh, National Conference and University Athletic and Academic Awards won by a nominee will absolutely strengthen their nominations. 
So these are the best of the best, and let's go ahead and let's get started. Our first inductee this evening is volleyball player Katie Wagner Mintz, being escorted by her son, Evie Mintz. When I took the job here in 1997, Katie was a sophomore. She started really coming around and in her last year, in 1999, she really had been slowly getting better and she emerged as one of the top outside hitters in the Mountain West and really led us to a great conference finish and, and a win at BYU against BYU in the Mountain West tournament. She was what we call a high flyer. She could jump out of the gym. She was so dynamic, so much fun to watch. So she was a whole different player than I was. And so we complemented each other really well. She was well over 10 foot touch, uh, only at 5'9". Um, really, really dynamic athlete. She gave everything at every moment, every practice, every game. She gave everything. And so she would be exhausted after every practice. and game because she really put her heart on the court and it was just great to be a role model for me to know that's the work ethic that I need to continue. That's good Katie, good job! She was the first uh, All-American that we had under my coaching reign here. She was really on the breaking point of the success um, that Tom's had over the last 15 years was started with that era. Uh, was Katie and she was the first one to kind of really get her name out there and become the first All-American in many years. Katie went out after playing here, went to Southern California and actually was on the AVP tour. She was one of my favorite beach partners. We got to play on the AVP. Um, we qualified in over half of our tournaments that year in the main draw, which was a huge feat for us. I think Katie deserves this 100%. She was hardworking. She was the athlete that would grind in practice, that would just change games based off her sure determination and will. She was super competitive. A, a Hall of Fame induction means you did something special in your career here. She came in and did what you're supposed to do. You work hard and you make yourself better and before you know it, she is a very high profile player doing great things for the program and helping usher this program from, you know, being a 20 to 25 team into being a top 10 team and uh, you know that's something special. Katie Wagner is a native of Aspen, Colorado who came to Colorado State in 1996 and helped launch one of the greatest periods in CSU volleyball history. An outside hitter, Wagner led the Rams to a 1998 WAC Division Championship and 1999 Mountain West Conference Tournament Championship, voted by the AVCA as second team All-American in 1999. Wagner finished her career at CSU first in attacks, fourth in kills, and fifth in sets. During her four-year career, the Rams volleyball team she played for went, you ready for this, 104 to 28. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> then after graduation, she spent the next eight years playing an AVP, AVP, AVP beach ball, volleyball. Say that ten times fast. And she worked in physical therapy, thank God, massage therapy, and as a preschool teacher and coached club and high school volleyball. Katie, congratulations, you are amazing. Katie Wagner, you guys. Wow. <laughs> So much emotions, I just didn't think I'd be this emotional already. <laughs> Thank you so much for this honor. Um, I'm so deeply touched by this. Um, this is beautiful. Thank you so much for everybody who um, 
put this together. This is just amazing, and everyone has been so kind. I've seen so many familiar faces tonight, and oh, this has been so special. Thank you all for coming. It's people like you that make being an athlete here so amazing. I'm just really blown away. I'm still in shock, I think. The last two months I've been trying to accept this, and it's just so surreal. Um, CSU is really the perfect place for me to come. Um, I mean, I'm from Colorado. I really wanted to play for a Colorado school. And not only that, but I have a lot of family that have attended this school. Um, so many cousins, but uh, my dad, he came here a few years back and threw the javelin. My grandfather attended, and my great-grandfather met my great-grandmother at a dance here. So I really was meant to come here. <laughs> Um, my parents are here tonight. I really need to thank you. Thank you for such a crazy, awesome start to my life. You gave me so much love. And, um, but you also, you taught me what was so important was that also laughter and play. I think everything was a game. We played so many games and laughed all the time. Um, you gave me so many wonderful experiences. I have these wonderful memories of fishing with my dad or riding in his dump truck and cutting firewood and delivering it or just building fences with you. And I remember my mom, she took me to so many different activities. It's hard to remember them all, but I remember just hiking up Independence Pass and having a picnic. Um, I was really shy, deathly shy. I didn't do well um, outside of the family. Um, very often, but you guys got me involved in, in so many things. Um, and we kind of discovered that I was, had a little bit of a competitive side and a little bit of a daredevil. When I would do ballet, my favorite part was always the jumps at the end, because I wanted to see if I could jump higher the next time. Um, when I competed in horse shows, my favorite part was the barrel racing, because I wanted to go fast. And of course, snowmobiling, I always loved to race there and still always been really sorry about the snowmobile I put over the cliff. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> um, but you guys just, all these things helped develop me as a kid and as a person. And um, I think another thing that really helped with my shyness was my dad had me get, he put me in um, team sports. I wasn't going to play volleyball at first. I knew I was fast, so I was going to do track. Um, but my dad said, you will play volleyball and basketball. And volleyball, I wasn't so sure because in fifth grade gym class, the PE teacher gave me a D in passing for the day. And I was kind of mad about that, so I didn't know if I was going to do volleyball. But I did it, and I love it. I still can't get enough now. Um, and you guys taught me work ethic. My dad would practice down in the gym under our con or the garage under the condo. We would practice basketball moves. We'd go over tape for high jump. He tried to help me with volleyball. And my mom was always there for all of that supporting. You guys came to every event I ever did um, when I was growing up. And when we, I came to CSU, I don't think you really missed very many matches, even the away ones. Um, you guys have taught me so much. Your dedication, your love, thank you so much. Um, Leon. My club coach, thank you. You, I met you when you were volunteering with the high school, and you just you made me fall in, you made me fall in love with volleyball in a whole nother way. Your enthusiasm, your passion for the game is amazing. I don't think anybody can tell a volleyball story quite like you can. You make me feel like I was actually there listening to your stories, um, and thank you for being so dedicated to me and helping me to get to where I am. Um, I have so many wonderful extended family, too, um, who have meant so much to me. Um, my Aunt Lois has been so dedicated. And um, I had some others who were going to come tonight who are, were sick. But um, I always had so much family to support me at matches. And I could always hear my Aunt Lois the most because she's always so mad at the refs. <laughs> And I thank them for their support. Um, 
Leslie, I'm so excited you made it tonight. Thank you so much. You are such an example of a CSU fan, and you always brought me such um, you brought me such up uplift. I always felt so wonderful when I saw you after matches. And thank you. And I think that's just another example of how amazing CSU fans are. When I came to CSU on my visit, um, there weren't a lot of fans that night at the volleyball match, but there on the cross the court, there was a small group of fans who were cheering, and they were called the Southside Screamers. And they had a chant for each player when they did something well. And they would sing, um, for Annalisa Sailor, who was the setter then, they would sing uh, Popeye the Sailor Man. And uh, they would sing Aerosmith, Janie's Got a Gun, when Janie Penfield would crush a ball. And I was so excited. I wanted to be a part of that. And that's what CSU playing at Moby, that's what you get. You get amazing fans, and it has been so special. Um, I do have to thank a coach that isn't here tonight, um, and that is Rich Feller, uh, former CSU head coach. He was the only coach that recruited me. I didn't get any other nothing. And I wanted to play so badly, and he gave me that opportunity to play here at this amazing school and at such a high level, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, Tom Hilbert, you have done amazing things with the program here. It has been so much fun to watch over the years. Um, not only are you a good coach, but you focus on more than just volleyball. And it's about life experiences and about seeing things when you're on a trip and getting to learn a little bit about something. I think one of my fondest memories of you is when we were on our Europe trip. And we were in the Samava Mountains in this tiny, tiny village. And they, had, they happened to have a tiny gym. And somehow a team showed up. I don't know where they came from. And we played this match. And we were just hammering them. And Tom took a timeout. And I'm like, why are we taking a timeout? We are killing them. And we came over to the side, and he just started in. Don't be shame, darling, don't be shame. And that was awesome. Um, <laughs> I know that our time together wasn't always smooth. <laughs> we, we struggled sometimes, and you helped me to, to take my game to the next level. Um, I think my, your first year at CSU, the main thing, your favorite thing that you said to me was, um, KD, be more athletic. <laughs> I spent some time being like, how? What am I not doing? <laughs> but, um, and then the next year, at the end of the season, you gave me one of those, um, I don't know if it's anger management or stress dolls, that when you squeeze, the eyes pop out of the head. <laughs> and you said, when you're mad, after practice, whatever, pretend this is me. And just, <laughs> so I wish I still had that doll. He did not survive. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I think what I, I'm really grateful for is that I know it's tough as a coach to figure out what motivates and drives each player and what, waken, what awakens them. And you worked really hard to find what would work. And my senior year really was an amazing year for me, and I'm very grateful, and thank you. I don't know how I'm going to talk about my teammates. I have four beautiful teammates here tonight, and um, I just don't even know how I can put into words how much you guys mean to me. Um, I was very interesting situation. I, I kind of played on two completely different teams. When I came in in 95 as a red shirt, we had five freshmen, seven sophomores, and one senior. So I had a lot of time with those sophomores. And that was kind of its own team. And, um, and it was, the be as Angela said, it was the beginning of you know, something amazing. I mean, we beat BYU. We hadn't beat them in 10 years with that 97 team. But each one of those girls on that team taught me something. I learned something from them. They gave me a piece of something. Um, and, and then when they graduated the 98, maybe probably the best recruiting class, or maybe one of the best recruiting classes that has ever come into the volleyball program came in and was a whole new team when we were young. But we went and did amazing things, and they kept going after I left. Um, and they were such talented, talented players. But all of them were amazing individuals. And 
women with integrity and character. And every day I wanted to play for them and for you. And when I was really down, they saved me. Um, when I was at my best, it was so much sweeter that I did it with all of you. Nicole, you're so athletic and so strong. And you would work me time and time again. And you made me a better blocker and a better hitter. And you did it with this um, carefree, happy, this most amazing smile. It just killed me. Um, Kelly, you served me off the court. You dug everything I had. And you did it. And when I looked at you, I saw strength and I saw comfort. And I knew that you were a friend more than just a teammate. Um, Kat, you've got to be the quirkiest, most positive, wonderful person and one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. She uh, was doing a drill, I think her red shirt year, and she was working so hard to get every single ball that they put over at her, and she did a roll and practically knocked herself out on the floor. <laughs> but she got up and said, I'm okay, and kept going. Um, and Esther, you have been my rock. You have been such a dear friend and roommate. Um, I enjoyed battling at the net with you. And thank you for coming to take care of me and Louis when he was just born. Um, you are, all are so special. Thank you for coming tonight. And lastly, I have to thank my husband, Dan. I met him while playing on the AVP when we were just a bunch of, a couple of uh, beach volleyball bums. And he has given me so much guidance and love and I adore him, and he drives me crazy. But uh, he's given me three beautiful boys, Evie, Louie, and Lee. And I think they're probably my tiniest big fans. Um, and they think their mama can do anything, <laughs> which is wonderful right now. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you all so much. This is such an honor. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Katie. I just think it's so funny that um, your coach gave you a voodoo doll. The rest of us actually made them, but the coaches, we hope they didn't know about them. So that was really cool, Tom. Way to go. Nice, nice job on that one. That was fabulous. I still have mine for John Matos. Anyway, on to our next inductee. <laughs> uh, we've got softball player Jessica Strickland Cole, and she is going to be escorted by her mother, Linda Strickland. Please watch. Jessica Strickland, the designated player, already in the lineup as the DP. I would say for Jess, it was all about her work ethic. Her commitment to CSU and to CSU softball, um, her, her quiet leadership, how she managed herself day in and day out on and off the field. Roller is short. But what she was competitively was she was her dad's girl. I mean, Lee was a mean, tough, good man, and she was that, but it was always in this nice package. The minute she had the ball or she had the bat, uh, she hurt you. And she helped us as, as a player for our women's team. Uh, she helped us. On the field, she was a tremendous competitor. If you wanted to go up against one of the top teams in the, in the nation, you wanted Jess beside you. When you look at what Jessica did, it, it's pretty incredible to have um, been a pitcher, but to also have been that great of a hitter. I mean, her her hitting statistics standing alone would probably get her into the record books. Yeah! I would say on any given day, Jess was was either the le was the leader with the with the ball on the mound or with the bat. Um, so she was she was making contributions on both ends of the game, and uh, that's rare. Um, at that high of a level for a pitcher to be able to do that with a bat as well. Her bat was 
definitely a weapon and um, was as good as her pitching. You know, so you found a place for her in the lineup. If she was not pitching, she was going to be hitting. From the mound, she did things for the team that, that were, was very strong. Yes, very deserved. Uh, she was a consummate player, four-year starter. Uh, every role impacted the team, impacted the conference. Uh, good enough for us to pick her up with uh, Steph Clavitter and All-American uh, Angie Tincher to be one of our three pitchers to face the national teams in the Canada Cup each year. She's deserving of this award probably as a pitcher by herself or as a hitter by, by herself. She's the kind of person that when you give an award like that, everybody says yes. Jessica Strickland remains as one of the finest softball players in CSU history and the only softball player to be named to two different All-America teams in one season. She came to CSU from Green Mountain High School in Lakewood and immediately became a factor for the 2004 Mountain West Conference Championship team as a pitcher. She was named the Newcomer of the Year by the Mountain West Conference and received honorable mention All-America honors. A four-time All-Mountain West Conference pitcher, Strickland's 2006 season ranks as one of the best in school history, both as a pitcher and as a batter. As of 2015, Strickland holds two season records and three career, career records in pitching and batting. Strickland worked with Triple Crown Sports to run youth softball tournaments and played for the Triple Crown for semi-professional team. Since graduation, she has employed her early childhood education degree. At a kid, that's what I did. Uh, sorry, uh, teaching first grade. So congratulations, and everybody, please welcome Jessica. Upon receiving the phone call explaining my induction, my mind was immediately taken back to the reasons I fell in love, with, in love with softball at the age of six. The sounds of popping leather, the ping of the bat, and cheering crowds. The smell of freshly watered dirt, big league chew, and, and um, sweet red Gatorade all resonated within me from the start. In a matter of seconds, that phone call got me thinking about how my career started and how I got to this point in my life. Although I don't remember, I've heard how my career began. A little girl watching her older brother play baseball. Dad couldn't understand why I wanted to play so badly or how I could be so insistent at the age of six. Every time my brother's team practiced, you would see me tugging at my dad's pants, saying, Daddy, I want to play. So dad finally gave in, and that's just what I did. I played baseball with the boys. The next year, when I was old enough, softball was introduced and I never looked back. After t-ball and coach pitch, it was time to choose a position. I'm not quite sure if I chose to become a pitcher or if it chose me, but nonetheless, I became one. You would see me on the mound with an intense focus, clear mind, and eye black. Lots and lots of eye black. I didn't know it then, but to others, it was easy to see that I found the sport I was meant to play. As the years passed and I continued to develop, I realized that this sport was more than just a game. I met incredible friends, traveled the country, played against other amazing athletes, and gained a work ethic and desire to achieve my greatest potential on and off the field. The day I signed with CSU, the local newspaper read, once a Ram, always a Ram. My mascot in high school was the same as CSU's. I made the best decision of my life at that time to further my softball and educational career as a Ram. Lacing up my spikes, putting on my pristine jersey, and stepping onto that Ram field quieted any fears I had as a college athlete. Between conditioning, weightlifting, and practice, the coaches had prepared me for the last stretch of my softball career. As a team, we bonded over long bus rides, studying on airplanes, and competing. When the time came to hang up my number seven jersey for the last time, it was bittersweet. 16 years of memories and moments gone in a flash. Coaches, friends, competitors, each holding a place in my heart would be cemented in time from that moment onward. 
After four great seasons, I knew my moment with this sport was over and it was time for me to move on. I was grateful and had a great respect for this so-called game, which had taught me so much in life. From being a little girl with a dream to standing here before you accepting this award is really a dream come true. Although softball has given me trophies and awards, it has given me more. A lifetime of memories on and off the field. Memories and experiences I will be able to pass on to future generations. It would be a lie to say that I did this all on my own. There are far too many supporters, leaders, coaches, teammates, and loved ones to mention by name, but a few who are my heroes. Mom, you were there from the start. A cooler rolling, icy hot rubbing, number one fan. You were and still are my rock who I can talk to about anything. Thank you for the countless years of support from the 5 a.m. wake up calls to the late grass stained laundry runs at night. Mom, you were always the perfect fan. Casey, my love, Thank you for being my partner, my shoulder to lean on, my supporter, and the love of my life. Although you weren't there during the softball phase of my life, you constantly remind me how gifted I was and how special I am. You jokingly introduce me to others as your Hall of Fame wife because you're proud of me and you know it will make me blush. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of my past years. I'm so incredibly grateful to spend my future with you and our beautiful son, Logan. Dad, we did it. You were my coach and my hero. You made me believe that I could achieve success before it ever happened. You taught me how to pitch and hit. You drove me to practices, tournaments, and spent hours on and off the field with me. You coached me over the phone if we were apart, and now, more than ever, I wish you were here. Thank you for always believing in me and supporting me in life. I know that you are a proud papa in heaven tonight. <laughs> Thank you, CSU, for making my lifelong song into a classic. There are no words to express my feelings. I am humbled by this award and know that this award is not only mine, but yours too. For without you, my song would not be heard for years to come. Thank you. Very nice, congratulations. And I have to say, you talk about the icy hot, I don't think that there was a person in here who was an athlete who when you said icy hot didn't go Ugh. 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 Anyway, I do miss it though, it's lovely. <laughs> congratulations, let's get on to our next inductee, shall we? Uh, he is a swimmer, I know I say he, a lot of people uh, say, well we only have a women's program. There was a men's program here a long time ago and this guy was amazing. Richard, or Rick, as he likes to be called, Cooley, he is escorted by his best friend, Chuck Wolf. Take a look. As far as I was concerned, when I first came there, Rick was the best athlete. And the reason being is because he did the all-around events. He was a flyer, he was a, a breaststroker, he was a backstroker, he was a freestyler. He did the IEM and he was awesome in all the events that he swam. He was the leader of the team. He, you know, he, he just, uh, he put his years in at CSU. Uh, he was the Nye Trophy winner uh, in 1971. He was the only swimmer to ever win that award. The team was oriented towards being national champions, not just conference champions. And so it was embodied with a lot of great swimmers, uh, John Mattos, Jim Malley, uh, Rick Cooley, of course. I think Rick was actually the heart and soul of the team during those years. That was the kind of the heyday of, of Ram swimming and diving at that time. We, we definitely had the best teams and uh, we were very proud of that. Rick showed his leadership by swimming any event for the team to win a meet, and some of these events were the long ones. During that time, Rick became one of the team leaders. 
leaders. He still is a leader. He was leading master's events way after he graduated from college. Well, Rick continued to swim. His love for swimming continued and he joined into the master swimming program and he became not only a national champion but a world champion. My feeling is uh, he probably is the most deserving of all of us uh, just because he was a four-time All-American. I mean from the time he was a freshman to the time he was a senior. He, he was always at NCAAs and he was always scoring points for Colorado State. I know that uh, uh, there's a couple people up in heaven that are looking down on Rick, proud of this moment, uh, Coach Solo and his brother Brian. And you know, Rick, I love you like a brother and I'm just so happy that you're finally getting this, this opportunity. You, you could always rely on Rick. He was, he was just a very unique individual, One, uh, just a special guy who I am proud to have him as my teammate and very, very honored to, to be his friend for all these years. Rick Cooley came to CSU from his native Michigan, and he helped lead the Rams during the golden years of men's swimming and diving. In his freshman year, he won the individual WAC championship for the 200 and 400 individual medley. Those are awful events. He returned, sorry, they are. <laughs> he returned to the 1969 to win the individual WAC championship again in the 200 and 400 IM. Rick, I didn't know you were so tough. He also set a WAC record doing that. He recorded his first All-American honors in 1969, finishing 10th in the nation in the 400 IM. Cooley's junior year, he ranked as his finest in the NCAA tournament when he finished 6th in the 400 IM, ninth in the 200 IM, and won his third All-American Award of 1970 as a member of the 400 Freestyle Relay Team. The Rams finished 8th in the nation as a team in 1970, which is the highest of any Rams swim team in school history, even now. Rick finished his senior year season with his sixth All-American Award, and he won the Nye Trophy as the only swimmer to ever win that award. Rick, congratulations. We finally got it done. Rest in peace. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, John. Thank you, Joe. I would also like to thank the selection committee for this truly great honor. It sounds cliche, but I did come to CSU as a boy and I left as a man. Not only did I get a, a relevant education and business that I stayed in that field for 30 years, but these guys and you know who I'm talking about, uh, provided me with a real, mo uh, real role models and guidance that eventually led me to the man I am today. I was recruited by Art Solo in 1967 at MSU during the NCAA championships. This is during a period for freshman ineligibility, so I couldn't compete if I did come to CSU but Art had the confidence to offer me a full ride scholarship. Um, during my visitation, I met the guys, I toured the campus, and had my first Mexican meal at Sam's, and everybody knows what that's about. I knew I had made the right decision. Luckily, the freshman ineligibility rule was, was dropped just before the swim season started, and I could now contribute to the team right away. The quality of the CSU swim team was truly all-American. And now this was the time of war protests in the 70s, 3-2 beer, college days, and things could have gone terribly wrong for me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but with arts coaching and the team's guidance, uh, I seem to have emerged successful. So this is a kind of a perfect storm of swimming talent during those years, placing eighth at the NCAAs, and perhaps producing the best swim team the whole state of Colorado has ever seen. 
This uh, bond continues today as we have several annual events. Oh, wait. <laughs> this is kind of a perfect storm. Yeah, that sure was. We worked hard and we played hard. This bond continues today as we have several annual events that have lasted 30 or 40 years. And these are truly long, long lived friends. For all these reasons, I'd like the Hall of Fame Selection Committee to consider inducting every man on that team in the 1970 swimming championship at the NCAAs uh, that scored a point for CSU. Um, you know, have them inducted into this truly great sports hall of fame. Honors such as this are much more appreciated as you get older. And of course, believe me, these guys would really, really appreciate it. <laughs> so it is, I celebrate this honor as a true high point, one of my high points in my life, as well as marrying my beautiful wife. And I thank you all. Thank you. Rick was just up here and he was like, I'm not a speaker. I think you did really well, but I do know one thing. Uh, you are a drinker. You and I have had lots of wine together, and I don't know how you guys, you call those guys friends, but anyway, that's okay. That's neither here nor there. That is all because of the alcohol, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. We will have more. Yes, we will have more. Amen to wine. <laughs> Let's give wine a round of applause. Thank you. All right. All right, up next uh, is a guy actually that I met right after he ended up signing here at Colorado State. Um, and he is a football player, awesome guy, Mike Newell. He's going to be escorted by his parents, Jim and Mary Newell. Go ahead and watch. Seven to 19. Mike Newell turns, hands the ball off. McDougal, big hole straight ahead. He's at the 30. Having a, you know, a, a guy like Mike Newell when I first stepped into playing running back was huge. Huge for a young running back coming in. You basically just had to make sure you hit the hole because you knew it was going to be there. The setback remains McDougal. He gets I think there was a stretch there where we had three years in a row with 2,000 yard backs. I think it was an NCAA record if I'm correct. And, and Mike was a huge part of that. He knew what Mike Newell was on the field. One was going to get 100%. His teammates knew he was getting 100%. And most of the time, I, if we went back and checked out the tape, we would see where Mike Newell not only got his block, but helped out on others and paved the way. And I know if I were a running back, they would say, hey, man, they felt a lot of confidence with Mike Newell there at the center position. Mike was that quiet, reserved, laid-back guy. Didn't say much, but when he did, it was for a purpose, it was for a reason, and you listened. Mike was one of the finest players I've ever coached. Since I can still see Mike at every practice there, rushing up to, to what do we call a team together, or at the end of practice, man, he'd come up there and show his leadership, get right there, and the other guys would follow him. Well, Mike was a, uh, the epitome of the student athlete at Colorado State, and then he personified what Sonny Lubick tried to instill in us when I played there. Um, I looked up to him a lot, and you know, he wasn't just a Hall of Fame football player, but he's a Hall of Fame kind of guy. Newell snaps it to Moses, he wants to throw. I think the strength of him was his character, his desire, not only from my standpoint, but from his teammate's standpoint, they know that they had somebody pretty special playing there at center. We had some of the best offensive line at that time. And you look at who was the captain of that offensive line most of those years, and it was Mike Newell. Mike Newell ranks as one of the finest offensive linemen in CSU football history. A graduate of Longmont High School, Newell became, he came to CSU in the fall of 94. 
he redshirted his first season. And then in 95, he played guard and soon moved to center for the next three seasons, starting 36 games from 1996 to 1998. He's a four-time WAC, all-WAC winner and was named the all-WAC first team in 1998 and second WAC all-team Pacific Division in 1997. He was a member of three WAC championship teams and was a member of an offensive line that included fellow Hall of Fame inductee Anthony Cesaro that did not give up a sack during the 97 and 98 seasons. Those are fun seasons to watch, by the way. And after graduation, Newell played five seasons with the Packers, Rams, and Texans in the NFL and one season in NFL Europe. While a member of the 2001 St. Louis Rams, he went to Super Bowl 36. He also played with NFL Europe's Scottish Claymores in the 2000 World Bowl. And following his pro career, he began his career in education as a physical education teacher to pass along his passion for sports. Mike Newell, congratulations. Those offensive line highlight films. <laughs> Just kind of get in the way and, you know. Man, how about those runners, though? Holy mackerel. Man, McDougal. Just breaking tackles like crazy. And looking out here, Calvin Branch, and what a hard runner that guy was. I mean, there was nothing but 100% out of him. So, I mean, talk about playing in front of some unbelievable football players in that era and, and you watch Damon break that run against CU and you know I'm, the, the one play I watched myself kind of get crumpled I was like ooh that wasn't so good <laughs> but it's funny being an offensive lineman because when you first you know when you're uh, you're just kind of you're somewhat miserable all the time <laughs> you're generally overweight you are kind of ugly and somewhat lacking in confidence in some areas of your life. And you know what? On the football field, though, it's a, t it's a place to shine. And um, uh, we knew about uh, what team success was. We knew that value of teamwork and, and that sense of satisfaction that comes from uh, team success. And dang it, I'm proud to be an offensive lineman. I loved it. I loved every moment of that. Uh, some thank yous for, uh, for tonight. I could stand up here for 25 minutes and say thank you to people. There's no doubt. I mean, I don't feel like I could have gotten someplace in my career in the NFL and here at CSU without just this gang of people right here, you know, pushing me, supporting me, making sure I'm doing what I should be doing and, and, and playing for my brothers on the field and the coaches. So I, I seriously could be up here for a long time saying, just saying thank you to folks. Um, a couple thank yous here. I, I think this venue was amazing. And the wait staff has done a great job, so thank you to the wait staff th today. It's an honor to be up on the stage with Amy. Um, we met a long time ago in, in a little uh, rec center down in Littleton. Um, and I remember being in awe because I knew what she had done and her accomplishments, and I had just signed at CSU, and I knew she was a Ram, so I was pretty fired up to meet her many, many years ago. Um, I want to say thank you to the Ram Alumni Athletes Association Board of Directors. This is a tough job. It's not easy. You got to compare athletes across generations, across different sports, uh, different genders, and it's it's a tough job. I think they do a great job, in and out every year, and you know I just look at the folks that have already been inducted here this evening. Um, I'd like to congratulate them, Katie and uh, uh, Jessica and Rick, and um, uh, of course Clark and then Lori. Um, it's just an honor to be inducted with you all. Um, my parents. I mean, you hear everybody talking about their folks, and I, it was no different for me. You know, I, maybe in a somewhat different way, uh, very hands-off. You know, they would encourage me. They'd be at every event, so supportive. They never once tried to coach me from the sideline. They didn't coach me after the games. They tell me I did a good job. They're proud of me. Uh, I never heard them, uh, you know, bag on a coach. Never heard them say a negative thing about a coaching staff. And, um, you know, every single game they were there, too. I mean, it was, I think my last three years they didn't miss a game. They might have just missed Hawaii one year. I don't know. I think that might have been the only game they ever missed. So you can't put a price on having that support in place uh, with you um, after every game. And it was pretty awesome. No matter if we won or lost or how I played, how good or bad, they were there. And that was, that's huge. 
And really, my career is just really a testament to the way I was raised by them. So thank you, Mom and Dad. Love you. Um, my brothers and sister, I think they gave up a little bit of their childhood, um, getting towed around in my stuff. Um, and I don't tell them often enough, but there's some things about them that I really, you know, some traits they have. Um, I wish I was a little better with my older brother, Jimmy, with his uh, patience and his parenting. And my little sister, Annie, and her, uh, her personality is just infectious. So great to be around her. And my little brother's his work ethic, his dedication, Mark, it's amazing. So uh, thank you to you two, all three of you. Um, family, it was like a family reunion after every game. It really was. And, uh, you know, I got a ton of family here tonight still. And, and I look back at that in those great times. We look at those pictures sometimes. And it's just fun to see all everybody and seeing everybody, how they grow up and these little kids and now they're adults. And so it's pretty fun. Um, so thank you to my family as well, my aunts, uncles, cousins. My grandma was there for every game as well. She's passed, but she, I know, I feel her in her heart. I, I feel her in my heart every single day. And she's somebody that just has really meant a lot to me. Um, CSU football and CSU brought me more than just, you know, athletics and academics. It actually brought my wife to me. So, and it really did. I mean, she was an athletic trainer. I wouldn't have met her any other way. And I knew the second I saw her, I got to go talk to that girl. And after probably a year and a half of persisting, uh, she finally uh, agreed to go out with me, so that was nice. <laughs> and, you know, through some adversity in my last year at CSU, after the season, I had some injuries, and, and then in my NFL career, just trying to uh, hang on by a thread at times, it seemed like, with, uh, you know, just trying to make it through that level of the game. And it's so cutthroat and so hard. And, you know, I couldn't have made it without you, babe. Your love and your support. So, and plus you're just this amazing mother, the most amazing mother I've ever seen. So, um, thank you so much. I love you, honey. Um, my kiddos are right up here. Michael's reading about reptiles right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a little book up here. Um, then there's Adam and Genevieve. And, you know, I got to tell you a story about Genevieve. Just last week we were at the, we live in Lyons and there's small town stuff, but there's a parade and a Halloween parade and last Saturday night and we're, going through town and, you, and the kids are the parade. And then you uh, come back through and you trick or treat at all the businesses. And the very last one we go to, they're handing out necklaces. The kids are like, let's go get some necklaces. So they run over there and they say trick or treat. Jimmy comes back over to me and goes, dad, and there's a little medallion on the bottom. And she says, this says, see you buffaloes on it. <laughs> and I go, well, you better go take it back to him. She's like, okay. <laughs> and, my wife was like, no, 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 they're handing them out, don't do that. And I was like, it's okay, Jimmy, we'll just burn it when we get home. <laughs> She's like, yeah! So, they bleed green and gold, these kiddos, they're awesome. So, they're great kids, and I love you little bear, little ram, and my little bubba. Um, teammates, yeah, I look out the, at the guys that are here this evening, and uh, in the sport of football, it's this... Uh, uh, this kind of gladiatorial, like, uh, you know, this brute sport, strength, toughness. You have to put forth great effort and selfless, smart, smart play, and you can't do it by yourself. You can't, even, it's, you can't do anything by yourself in football. And my teammates, um, I was surrounded by great players. I already mentioned some of them, but I see more in here, and there's other guys I'm thinking about in my head. Uh, my success would have been minimal without them. It really, truly would have been. And I think about those offensive linemen I played with and quarterbacks and wide receivers. And I always think about those guys first. But I got to name some of these offensive linemen. Eric Bailey, they don't get enough credit. Steve Dundee, Blaine uh, Saipia, Rogowski, Josh Danzeru, Justin Borvansky, Broderick Lancaster, Craig Brooks. I'm thinking of, there's more I'm missing. Tim Stuber, Anthony Cesario. Uh, you know, man, Cesario, Hall of Famer. I, every time a goose. Flock of geese goes over my head. I hear him honk, and I hear Cesario hollering at me. God bless him. He's, you know, it's been five years now. I miss him dearly. Um, think about you all the time, brother. Um, and then that great defense that we had, too. Man, we had some good defenses back in the day. And you just learned, like, during the season, these guys, it's like Monday through Friday, you just hate them. Because by the end of the season, you're just grinding on each other, and it's just, it's rough. And... Uh, you know, I think about guys like Devon Hawkins, who was always like really sweaty and like, but he was he was he wasn't very tall either, so he had this natural leverage on me, 
and it was a nose guard, and I had to go against him all the time, and I just, oh, but on Saturday, you know, we could lock arms and, and walk out on the field together, and I was freaking happy that they were on my side on Saturdays because I knew they'd go out there and battle for me, and I was going to do the same for them. So my teammates, uh, you're only as good as your teammates in football, and, and I had some darn good ones in the day. Some coaches, Rocky Whitworth, he coached here in the 80s. He was my high school coach. I mean, how lucky is that? And he was tough and he was fair. Uh, I still consider him a mentor. He's a teacher. Uh, Ty Barrett, if you know Ty Barrett, he played football here in the 80s. And he is this big, gnarly guy that's like super physical. And he was my offensive line coach in high school. And I don't know how I got luck. I, I totally lucked out with that, but that fellow because he really taught me how to play the game from this kind of tough, nasty, physical, whistle to whistle standpoint of uh, you're not taking any prisoners out there. And I just remember him just, I mean, he, he could motivate uh, in every way. So uh, Ty Barrett, um, he's one tough SOB and I love him. Uh, coach Benton, a successful coach, perfect mix. He was a motivator. He had the technical knowledge of the, of the, the game, toughness, game planning. And he'd fine tune me into the player I was, there's, without a doubt. He, he was our offensive line coach here at CSU. Um, the athletic training staff, uh, Steve, I remember Biggs, I remember uh, obviously Fred Oglesby and many others, keep you healthy. Tony Federico, our strength and conditioning coach, who was just this, uh, he was a confidant. He was somebody that motivated me and he would drop anything to lift with me and make me a better player. And I owe a lot to him. Coach Lubick, saw him earlier tonight and Gosh, he's a legend, and he was wearing his name tag earlier. I'm like, and he dropped it on the ground, or it fell out of his pocket, or something. He's like, "Oh, I better put that on." My like, coach, everybody knows you. You don't have to put it on. And the guy, I can't say enough about him. And I didn't know how much Coach Lubick would mean to me, um, but I remember sitting in meetings and just hanging on to his every word. And um, once a year, he would come to an offensive line meeting. Coach loved defense. And he would spend his time with the defense. But once a year, he'd come check us out. And even though he loved the defense, we knew he loved his offensive line, too. And um, thank you to Coach Johnny Square, spiritual leader, spent many nights with Cesario and I in the, in the, uh, the hotel, uh, praying before the games. A um, couple of little stories. I'm sorry, I'm going to go Storyville here. But uh, I'm thinking about 1996. We played Air Force. And we were down there in uh, the Springs. And it was like late third quarter and we're down by 27 points. And Coach Lay comes over and Coach Lay was this, he had the deepest voice I've ever heard on a, some, on a person. And he came over, we're sitting on the bench, we're kind of dejected and it's just the offensive line there. And what he said uh, was, you guys are gonna call me crazy, but we can still win this game. And you know, I guess we were just you know, naive enough or stupid enough to believe just a little bit. I remember still thinking, man, we're down by 27 coach. And <laughs> with three minutes left in the third quarter. And it's almost like anybody affiliated with CSU that day heard him say that. I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. He, uh, we went out, very next series we got the ball back, and Fisher DeBerry put in his second string. Fans are filing out of the stadium, and we just, we just drive it right down the field, get a quick touchdown. Defense comes out, gets the stop. We drive on, first team defense is back out on the field for Air Force. We drive, didn't matter now. We were believing, scored a touchdown, get another stop, score a touchdown, get another stop. We're driving down the field, fourth and goal from the 20. We have to score a touchdown, we're down by six. And Moses Moreno throws this ball to Jeremy Calhoun, best catch I've ever seen in my life. Fully horizontal, fingertip grab, back of the end zone, comes down with the ball. And I'm looking for flags because I just tackled the nose guard. And <laughs> No flag, but we did, get, we did get a flag for celebrating. So then Mac McDougal, no doubt about it, is gonna come out and gonna, he's gonna kick that extra point. We're gonna win this darn game. And sure enough, he has to kick it from back by, you know, I snap it from the 18 or whatever. He kicks it through, defense gets another stop to finish the game. And the reason I say Coach Lay said that and everybody in that stadium heard, those Air Force fans were filing out of the stadium when we were down by 27. We look up at our stance and darn it, I don't think a single one left. That section was packed. Nobody cashed out. 
And I, I don't know how it could be that everybody heard him say that. They didn't, but there was just something about what he did that day that kind of instilled this never die attitude in our football team. Next season, we're playing, I gotta tell this one, this is an offensive line pride kind of story, and McDougal's involved. Um, we're playing in the WAC championship game. We had the previous year, Calvin Branch right here, unbelievable runner, had rushed for 1,000 yards, and so had Damon Washington. And then the next year, Damon had already had 1,000 yards. And I remember sitting on the bench, it's, we had the game in hand, and Benton walks over, and he's like, hey, guys, we know Damon's at 1,000 yards. We're not sure where McDougal is. We've got to get him 1,000 yards. I mean, that was our stats. That was our offensive line stats. And we're like, okay, coach, we're going to do it. And we run out there on the field next time we get the ball. They call 38 truck. You saw me pull on one of those plays uh, on the highlight. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Maybe you were watching the runner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he scored on it. So uh, I would watch him too. So I pulled out, came around the horn, probably around Eli Workman, Eric Bailey on the strong side, 38 truck. And uh, there's Brian Urlacher. I mean, he's coming right through. And he was kind of a smaller guy then. But I still say it's Brian Urlacher, because it was. He ran through. I picked him up. McDougal right off my butt. Goes 75 yards to the house on the very next play after Benton tells us that. And he not only finished with over 1,000 yards, he finished with over 1,100 yards. He's rushed for like 250 plus yards that day. And man, I just remember running down the field and thinking about, man, what a great feeling this is and the pride we had. And it wasn't just us. It was the tight ends. It was the the receivers that would make plays when we're throwing and walking downfield when we're not. And the runners just hitting the holes and just running hard. And Moses carrying out fakes on those play actions. I mean, we just had a great teams. Um, I'm going to stop on the stories. But I do want to tell you, uh, I heard another inductee in the past say he was grateful for this moment. So because he had, um, because it reminded him of all the good that he had done at CSU. And I'm kind of from a different standpoint. I remember all the great things. And I love that. I remember the good stuff. And I'm starting to forget my shortcomings, which is really good. And I'm starting to forget those lousy plays, but I was reminded of one. Um, <laughs> and my personal weaknesses, I forget that about my teammates too. And what's left behind is just these bonds. You know, and it doesn't matter if I played with the guy for you know, one season, he was a walk-on, I don't care. And when I see him, I just am really genuinely excited about that and love to see my old teammates. And like I said earlier, you're pretty much nothing without these guys that you're going to battle with. And those regrets are few. The successes and the accomplishments are many. Um, those coaches and players really shaped me into the man I've become. And um, one last thank you to all the folks that are in the room here tonight. You are CSU, and we got some great things going on around this place. Uh, one more thing, sorry. <laughs> I said three to five minutes, oh wow. And a guy called me long-winded this morning. The guy that was doing it, he did an interview for him with me, and he said, oh, you're long-winded, but you got lots of good stuff to say, so. <laughs> kind of a backhand compliment. <laughs> um, at the end of every game we'd win, we'd sing the fight song. And darn it, I learned pretty quick, it had to be loud and boisterous. And it was kind of a culmination of like a hard week's work, but also encompassing in that was this, um, uh, you know, the commitment you've made over years and years, and then, you, and then you win the game, and then you get this moment of just pure jubilation, and you sing this song with these guys. And this is kind of my end game with CSU in my football career. I mean, I have nothing left to accomplish here. And it means a ton to me. And it would mean even more if we could all get loud and boisterous in here and pretend like this might be a locker room just for a few minutes and sing a fight song. So if you would, please. And, and if you sing off key, it doesn't matter. You just got to be loud, OK? And I'll lead it. If you know it, sing it loud, OK? Call on all people to please stand up. Call on all Rams to stand up.
Congratulations. And again, to your daughter, when, you, when your dad was talking about that necklace that you got that had the, the CU Buffalo on it, and you, you should give it back. Well, here's the thing. I met a CU Buffalo player about 16 years ago. I've been trying to give him back ever since. <laughs> but your mom's right. Just, just keep it and, and, you know, you can torture him later. It's okay. Don't worry about it. That's okay. It's called marriage. Don't, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Total torture. I love how Tom stood up for the fight song, by the way. What are you doing standing up for our fight song? <laughs> you were here one year. Yeah, good job. It's all about Tom. All right, we're gonna, our next inductee. Uh, we are so excited. She's a track and field thrower, Lori Smith Thornton, and she is escorted by, this is how they said it, just friends, Joey Cheek. Take a look. I just think it was a, uh, a unique combination where uh, she was relaxed, yet she had uh, the adrenaline of competition, uh, very confident at that time. From a rhythm standpoint, um, I really liked the, the entire rhythm of the throw, and she, yeah, she just really put it together, I think. <laughs> Broke the NCAA record on our home track, which is a you know great, great time and place to do it, and uh, she won all all the throwing events she was in, she won the discus hammer and the, the shot uh, and set meet records, uh, conference records in all three. The Mountain West yeah! Conference Champion in NC. At the end of the day, you wanted to have the medals like she had, so to look up to her, you knew that, you know, if I want to be on this girl's level, I'm going to have to really work hard. And what she did was she brought the team up with her, and that was definitely one of her biggest leadership qualities was that she brought people with her. So I was like, hey, you want to give me this? Good job, I'm so uh, proud of you. But I just need to jump for it so you can come with me. Oh. <laughs> Lori Smith was definitely an explosive athlete, um, and not just in her abilities, but it also in her personality. She was just so dynamic and explosive in that too, and she was just bubbly. A fierce competitor. It, it's one of these deals, I think she hated to lose more than she liked to win. She just absolutely hated, hated getting beat. Olympian, uh, how, how do you top that? Um, you know, continued to compete on a national and world stage after she was here. I believe, without a shadow of doubt, that she has represented Colorado State very well, um, academically as well as athletically. She, she earned it. I mean, she put the work in, and with the, the record she broke and the standard she set here, uh, being an Olympian, uh, NCAA record holder, NCAA champion, I mean, her resume speaks for itself. She did the Rams proud. Lori Smith came from Julesburg, Colorado to set school conference and national records as one of the greatest throwers in CSU track and field history. A protege of coach Brian Bedard, Smith immediately made an impact on the Rams team, winning a Mountain West Conference title her freshman year and scored her first and scored the first for her nine all -Amer she won nine all American awards. That's what I'm trying to say, Lori. Trying to get it out. I got hit in the head with an ATV. I'm doing all right. <laughs> I won. It didn't. <laughs> well, in 2003, she placed in the indoor shot put and weight throw. In 2004, she won a gold medal in the North American Central American Championships for Hammer and became an All-American in the NCAA outdoor competition for Hammer with a sixth place finish. The following year, she won the NCAA championship for Hammer. She set the school, conference, and NCAA record for Hammer on May 13th, 2005, you will never forget that, with an outstanding, ready for this, 70.03 meters. That's amazing. She continued to excel in track and field outside of her CSU career, placing ninth in the 2004 Olympic trials, 
fourth in the 2008 Olympic trials. She was also a competitor in the 2012 Olympic trials. Do I hear a 2016 birth? No. <laughs> Shut that down. Okay, well, you know what? She actually, she went um, as a member in Beijing in 2008 as a member of the US team. She placed 39th in the games. Congratulations, Lori. Wow. Well, um, first of all, I want to um, start off by thanking everyone for this awesome, awesome um, award. I was originally going to come up here and uh, wing it, and then when I came here, they gave me a handful of uh, free drink tickets, so I scribbled some stuff on someone's uh, name card so I wouldn't uh, forget anything. Um, wow. So many, so many familiar faces. Uh, there's so much different uh, since the last time I was here, but it's really awesome. I look over and I see uh, Bedard over there. I see uh, Droopy, uh, the trainer brothers. Uh, I saw Dell running around, and uh, I'm excited that I have aged the best out of any one of my friends. So if you get to see them around, we can all compare, uh, compare that. But um, no, in all, in all honesty, it's just... Um, amazing uh, to be selected. I remember I was a, at um, a Starbucks a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, and um, I'm kind of that person that's always doing uh, different stuff, so I recently decided to do another sport. Um, so I'm, there's a new sport, it's um, grid. It's kind of like CrossFit, so if you like exercising fast, uh, you'll love it, and if you don't, you'll hate it. Um, but I, I got called, and they told me they wanted to um, uh, induct me, and I was just I was floored because, one, ever since uh, Drew got in, like <coughs> seven years ago, um, I have been bugging Coach Bedard. And then finally I was like, well, it's never going to happen, so uh, it'll be fine. But I was really, really um, excited to get chosen. Um, I was talking to uh, Tony not too uh, long ago, and our uh, should have been maybe five minutes turned into 45 minutes, as it always does uh, when we start ta talking and joking. And I told him I hadn't prepared anything. And he's like, just tell stories. And then when I was talking earlier, they're like, uh, try to keep it PG, because it's going to get streamed. So then I got rid of half of everything I was going to say tonight. Um, but uh, just want to tell a couple of stories. Uh, first off, when I, um, when I came here, I, uh, I graduated from a small town, Julesburg, Colorado. Uh, there was a lot of northeastern Colorado folks in here. I think there's a rich history of us small town farm kids coming here. Uh, and I think it's absolutely awesome that, um, that we uh, keep up that tradition. But um, when I came here, I remember watching my first Olympic Games in uh, 1996. I was going to my freshman year of high school and um, I was just like, wow, what, what is this sport? What are they? What are they doing? I was just amazed, and I watched it every single day that it was on, and I was convinced I was going to go, so I forced me and my little cousin to run around the block. And um, as you can tell, I was not a runner, so it, was, it took a long time. It was terrible, uh, but we were going to run and uh, go to the Olympics. Um, I saw this uh, Olympic uh, gymnast from Russia. Um, I don't remember his full name, uh, but his nickname was Sexy Alexi. You can Google it later. Um, but I was so convinced that I was going to go to the Olympics and meet him that I actually took four years of Russian in high school because when I went to the Olympics and we met, I would have to, you know, speak the language of my husband. Um, <laughs> if anyone has a few drinks afterwards and wants to know what I remember of Russian, I'll tell you, but it's, I can't tell you it right now. Um, but... Uh, I got this fantastic opportunity to uh, continue throwing in college. I was the first person in my family ever to uh, attend college. I had no idea what I was doing. I was 17. Uh, Bedard had recruited me, and he seemed like such a genuine person, such a caring person. Uh, so I agreed to come to CSU. And the first thing I did of any kid that grew up wearing jingos is I showed up with like an eyebrow ring, a tongue ring, a belly button ring. I was like, I'm 17 and grown. And, uh, <laughs> and Bedard is like, what? did I do? And it didn't get better. It actually took 10 years for um, the school to forget my time here and only remember the good stuff. So, <laughs> But um, it, was, uh, it was definitely a great experience. And my, my first uh, 
experience of track and field, uh, Del Helsa was the head coach of CSU, and I think he's somewhere over here. Um, it's, is that you? Okay, there he is. And I remember he told us this crazy story. Uh, Melissa can tell you, she was there. Actually, all these guys were there. Uh, he was telling us how, how, you know, you have to be tough if you want to be a Ram. And he, you know, he wanted to prove how tough he was, so he put like needles under his fingernails. And I remember like, what in the world do I have to do to throw for? Because I was so surprised. And he tells stories about jumping out of the rafters and jumping out of planes. And it was just, it was a lot to take from being this small town kid thrown in a field uh, behind the swimming pool to uh, coming to CSU. And I just, I want to um, point out and thank Del Hessel because uh, just an amazing, amazing person, uh, really, taught me what it was to dig deep and have that fire and not care what any limitations or what people thought of you, but just to, to really have that fire and, and drive. So I want to uh, definitely uh, thank Del Hessel and his craziness uh, <laughs> for bringing that out of me. Um, there were a lot of, a lot of firsts. Um, my freshman year, I remember we, uh, our first uh, big travel meet was Mount Sac. Uh, there was a coach helping. Actually, I texted Bedard not too long ago to ask him his name. But uh, my first my first plane ride was at CSU. I've never never uh, rode a plane before, and uh, Bob Perry was uh, helping out. And one of our teammates, Hannah, pointed out to him, she's like, uh, "Bob, this is Lori's first time on a plane." And I was like, shy still. And then he looks at me and he's like, what are you, stupid? And I was like, no, I'm poor. Uh, so, uh, but uh, that taught me to not tell anybody your greatest fears. Um, <laughs> um, but it was, it was a long, long journey to track and field. Uh, Tony recorded a lot of it. I remember one of my first interviews, he's like, how did you, how did you get into the sport? And I, um, I told him I, uh, I failed at cheerleading, so I went out for football. So. Mike, I could have been uh, one of your teammates very easily, just so you know. But I was a, a failed cheerleader, and I think one of my other awesome quotes was, uh, I was a chubby kid with asthma, went out for track, so of course I threw. Um, but uh, it, it, kept, <laughs> it kept getting better. So when you were mentioning being a, um, a overweight and painful, I, I felt your pain <laughs> right there. Um, I had some amazing, amazing, uh, talented teammates. And um, really, we pushed and pulled each other. Uh, when someone found success, it was uh, like we would pull others into that success. And if someone was on the edge, we would push them just so they could get over. I was uh, blessed to be in this, this amazing year with throwers. We have uh, Melissa, Hannah, uh, the trainer brothers were there. Drew, I'm sure I'm uh, leaving out. Keela. Um, <laughs> Kale. Uh, there's just this awesome, awesome uh, group of us. Um, Hannah was always so focused. So over the summer, she was working really hard. If she'd get all lean and dark, I'd be like, hey, guys, you should get really lean and fit, too. And I would say stuff like, yeah, I lost 10 pounds over the summer. And he's like, that's great. I'm like, but I gained 15 back. Uh, so uh, so was there. Uh, Melissa Harms, who's uh, with me tonight, um, I have known her and competed against her in every sport and every position for 22 years. Um, I love her so much. She is uh, like my sister. Um, we've known each other since we were 11. Every sport, uh, she was Haxton, I was Julesburg, so, you know, obviously rivals and enemies, and just to grow to teammates, and as adults, uh, she was my bridesmaid, I was one of her bridesmaids, and I just, um, I love her so much, and it just, it means so much, uh, just beyond sports and beyond that, like the, the friendships and the relationships that you uh, get with people, like, you, you can't replace that, you can't make it up, and it's just, it means really, uh, I am not going to cry because this is not waterproof uh, mascara, uh, but it just really means so much that uh, every major point in my life that um, she has, she has um, been there for me. Um, what I want to say, uh, 2000, uh, my last couple years at uh, CSU uh, were rough. I absolutely, absolutely love Bedard, but he can tell you uh, we would bump heads. I'm very passionate and... Um, uh, I don't want to say wrong because I'm not that ever, but <laughs> there's times I'm less right than others. Uh, but uh, 
he was amazing. I was dealing with some uh, major injuries, and just he's been such an amazing uh, support for me, just a rock and just a lot of turmoil in my life. And uh, I don't think it's very often that you have a coach that goes above and beyond. Like, I've spent holidays with him. I've been around his family. And just, like, him to open up to me and just guide me even when I came kicking and screaming. I, I just think it's so amazing. He, you know, dropped everything to come to my wedding, flew in tonight to come to the induction. I just, um, I can't thank this man enough for everything that he's done for me. And uh, just beyond coaching me on how to throw a hammer far, but just to show me uh, what kind of person that I wanted to be and convince me that, you know, I deserved the things in life that I wanted. So, um, again, I'm not going to cry, uh, but I just wanted to thank, uh, thank him. I do have some funny stories. I'm going to tell you stories about him falling asleep at practice and uh, me turning back at him and like, what did you think of that throw? And he's like, <coughs> how did it feel? Uh, but, <laughs> uh, asking him if, uh, you know, are we really supposed to do 10 rounds that? And he's like, well, only if you want to get better. Um, what else? We found that hidden video of him from 1980s, where apparently you don't need to wear clothes to compete. Uh, did CSU ever own an all-white booty short uh, outfit? <laughs> Actually, his booty shorts inspired my own love of booty shorts in my own career. Uh, when I made the Olympic team, they tried to give me these baggy shorts and this baggy shirt, and like, oh, here's the thrower's outfit. And I was like, give me something sexy. And they're like, well, I got this tiny speed suit. And I'm like, sold. Uh, so <laughs> thank you for inspiring me in, uh, in my choice of clothing. But again, again, I, there's so many people here. Like just tonight, I've uh, seen so many familiar faces, got to talk to so many people. And I just, I want to thank you all uh, for your encouraging words, everything you've done for uh, keeping me healthy, keeping me on track, telling me to stay in school, telling me to, what classes to take, and just encouraging words. Um, sometimes I don't even think that uh, uh, thanks is enough. And uh, coming back here 10 years later, seeing all the, the changes is, uh, is amazing, like all the new builds. Uh, when I was first here, we were so poor. This is a true story. We were given one t-shirt and one pair of sweats. And uh, by the sophomore year, I'd worn a hole in the crotch of them. So I put a giant camouflage patch on it. And they were so embarrassed because I wore those to conference that I got another pair of sweats. So for you guys to have all these new buildings, and uh, when Amy was like, yeah, when I was back in, I, I know what you mean. We had nothing. We had a rock, and we threw it. We liked it. Um, but I, I really... I wish I would, have, I would have slowed down and really appreciated um, my, my time here, the people uh, that were around me. I was such a, a clown and a butthead. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I apologize, but again, <laughs> I just want to thank uh, Melissa and Scott for coming up. Uh, I want to thank my date, Joey, who my husband does not know he's here with me, so just keep that. I'm just joking. Uh, Joey, thank you. Uh, Joey Cheek, Olympic gold medal, some awards, stupid. Um, I want to thank my husband, who was not able to make it here, but he is watching live stream, and he's uh, staying up. Um, my husband is amazing. I'm totally going to brag on him. He's just like Special Forces Green Beret dude. It's not a big deal. Uh, he's... <laughs> He's an um, amazing man. I've never met uh, a man like him before. He's my, my number one fan, um, loves me unconditionally, and I am just I'm so proud that um, I'm able to be around somebody uh, like that. Uh, Tony, thank you for um, editing a lot of stuff uh, from articles that would have cost me a lot of things later on in life. Uh, thank you to the coaching staff, the school, and um, thank you guys for having me this evening. And sorry if it was too long. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, can we just, she just brushed over this. Can we give like a big round of applause for the uh, husband who is Special Forces Green Beret and thank you for everyone who's serving.
I love how Lori says, we, used to, oh, we were so poor, we would throw rocks. Well, we still have the same swimming pool that Homie Slice back here, my coach, swam in, and I think it's still the same water. <laughs> People are like, why did you spit water in the Olympics? Do you drink that water? I've learned it from Moby Pool. Anyway. <clears throat> Which brings us to our next inductee. Uh, into the class of 2015 football player Clark Hagens. He's going to be escorted by his son, Damian Hagens. Take a look. You always hear the reference of the guy has a motor. If you look up the definition of that in the football dictionary, It'll say Clark Hagans. Sack back at the 31-yard line. In there, Clark Hagans for CSU. He was well-liked by his teammates. I think that was a key to both the guys going in tonight. You can see that the players respect it. Not only respect it, but they like those guys. And Clark was goofy, man. He was always that goofy guy. And when he first came in, we called him Kramer. I mean, because he was tall, he was skinny, and he had hair that stood up to here. But he was that goofy guy. <laughs> that was the great thing about Sonny is he was able to find those guys who could put the pain aside and wanted to get the job done. I mean, they wanted to play for the guy to the left of them, the guy to the right of them. And Clark was one of those guys, man. I mean, he, he wanted to put everything he had on the field. Like At Clark the 24 Higgins. yard line by Higgins. Man, that's the difference in our team is we had grit and we wouldn't give up. But if you put those two after, you know, Sean Moran and Brady, man, they were as good as it got. And then all of a sudden, here you come along with Joey and Clark. They were two bookends. They were as quick and as fast. And of course, our record show speaks for itself. Picked off by Higgins. Clark Higgins will bring it back to the 10. When Clark did get to the pros with the, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, to see him and Joey Porter both on the outside linebacker position, it was just kind of like seeing old buddies reunited and to see them play together again was awesome. He was a great football player for Colorado State, as deserving as anybody. How fortunate I have been to be a part, to be the coach when these young men were coming in here and playing. Boy, they could sure make a coach look good. I mean, you look at statistically, <laughs> he's deserving. I mean, he's, I think, still up there on the all-time sack leader. I mean, the guy bled green and gold, man. I mean, I mean, he really did. I mean, he left every single ounce of him on the field every single game. Well, Clark Higgins was one of the most prolific defensive players of the late 90s for the Rams. And McDougal, you are right. He continues to hold the career sack record at CSU, so that's awesome. He also added to the defensive power teams and led the Rams to two conference championships, WAC 1997 and Mountain West Conference in 1999. He was honored with second team all WAC honors in 1998 and first team all Mountain West honors again in 1999. His career, 33 sacks, has remained a record for 17 years. He was a key player in the 1997 Holiday Bowl victory over the University of Missouri most awesomeness. Higgins was chosen in the fifth round of the NFL draft by the Pittsburgh Steelers and began his 13-year career. Just awesome. At the highest level right there. Seriously, 13 years. That's amazing. Uh, he teamed up with fellow Ram and Sports Hall of Famer Joey Porter, Captain and Tennille, as I like to call them. Uh, and he, <laughs> sorry. He was a member of the Steelers Super Bowl 40 championship team uh -oh, that went on to win. Oh, you guys played the Seahawks, didn't you? I'm so sorry. My husband played for the Hawks on that team. Uh, then he went on to play for the Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers, who also won NFC championships. Hagans, you retired from the NFL in the 2012 season. Clark, you are amazing. Congratulations. Thank you, uh, thank you everybody. Um, I ain't got no speech, so I'm winging it. Straight up. Uh, Mike Newell, big shout out. Um, I wouldn't be up here if it wasn't people like you. McDougal, you stole all the highlights anyway. I'm just happy that, I mean, you were even in mind, so. <laughs> so like I said, you got gold statues all over Colorado, so that's great. Um, 
good to see you, Calvin. Uh, been a big brother. Um, always uh, appreciate the King Supers groceries when after you got drafted. I can say that now it's not an NCAA violation, so <laughs> everything's all good. I um, want to thank my kids first and foremost. Aliana, she's my inspiration. She's over there sitting down. And then my heart, Damon, which he's, you know, he's had to get a haircut today and he doesn't like, but he looks sharp. Uh, so um, coming into CSU, uh, it was amazing. It was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, a kid out of Torrance, California, you know, a pair of chucks, some corduroys and a Hawaiian shirt. I mean, you saw the picture. And then, you know, Kevin didn't lie. They called me Kramer. Joey called me the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So, you know, that sort of thing. So just coming here. And then with Sonny Lubick uh, walking on and John Skladani, my coach, then he, uh, he just had me out there and um, he just said that you could play football. I thought he was crazy. I got to CSU. Um, Jay Charlin, my teammate back there, shout out to him. He's over there right now. He played corner, but I was 30 pounds lighter than him playing DN when I first got here, which was, wasn't the best thing. And I was, we were talking outside and, you know, I remember uh, Coach Luba used to say, hell, three squares a day. And, you know, you come out here and play some football and, you know, it'd be all right. You can get a scholarship and, you know, if, and then you get a scholarship and then you have a bad practice. And he was like, who gave you one? And it's like, you point at him and say, you did like a month ago. So, you know, um, that's just how it was. And I'm just so thankful to you guys, you know, selection committee and this, all the people here because we're all Rams, we're all family. And, you um, know, I'm just, I, I mean, I'm speechless right now. And when I say I don't have a speech, you don't see any kind of cards or anything, no PowerPoint or, I mean, so I'm just really winging it. Uh, don't want to leave anybody out. Coach Ellers is back there because I know if he doesn't, met, if I don't mention him, he's going to be looking for me, but you ain't going to find me in the classroom now. Them days are over. <laughs> Even when then you can find me there. Anthony Hill back there, he's one of the people that paved the way for all the new stuff to be built. Calvin was one of the guys. Uh, you know, I'm sorry about the winter conditioning championships that you missed out on you know, during, the, during the time. I want to give another shout out to uh, Jeff Spurbeck. He's over there, my agent, my uncle. He was a father figure to me uh, after college, after my dad passed, we've had some, some conversations. And then last but not least, my mother. Um, after my dad passed my senior year in high school, um, honestly, I didn't want to go to college. And uh, I was just going to work at Jack in the Box and maybe go to El Camino City College, she wasn't having it. So she kind of shoved me out the door, and then that was the whole thing. I think she bribed Coach Lubick and the rest of the staff because Coach Ellis put on some pounds. So he told me the other day, 270 or 295 with some sweet potato pies. So I know where they went. <laughs> so um, they're still in there. You're back there. You're st that's why you're standing up. You're burning calories or something. <laughs> um, this is a true honor. Mandy, I love you. Thank you. Rock is over there. Um, Sarah High School. He used to brag about Los Angeles and his school being the best. And, you know, remember the old TV show Rock and he looks like Charles S. Dutton stunt double. Um, he's over there, lost some weight, trimmed up, and thought he was the biggest, buffest, sexiest dude. You know, we've, we've bled and sweated together and, you know, all that other stuff. And Mike was talking about Devon Hawkins. He was right there with you. And then I'll just say this, though. Just like you hated us all week, we hated you. And I hated you especially because after you choke slammed me, you'd walk, you would walk over me and then go back to the huddle and tell me about it. <laughs> so don't make it seem like you were such a great, you know, teammate on them days from Monday to Thursday. 
where you had the whole crowd saying, oh, you know, Mike is solid. <laughs> that wasn't happening. Uh, Jay Charlin, Joe Buck, my guys. Jay Charlin, all the times we used to play college football game down Sega, used to whoop you, living in the G-Wing in Corbett. Loved it. And then we went to practice, and you had to hear about it during stretching. And like I said, what we say? Clear. Clear. So, I mean, I know I'm all over the place. And, uh, I mean, I can't believe I'm up here. And this is a great moment. Uh, I'm humbled, speechless. Uh, the Kevin McDougals with the statues. Uh, the Damon Washingtons. The Calvin Branches, the Moses Morenos, you know, Anthony Cesario, rest his soul. Um, the Eric Baileys, the Tim Stubers, I mean, the, the Newtons, the Eric Olsons of the world. With, we trained for the combine. And just like you said, Mike, you know, the NFL's a grind. And I mean, it seems like there's a knife at your throat every 30 seconds until, you know, you might, I wouldn't even say sleep, I would just say go to the bathroom. That's when you at least thought you had a pass. But um, thank you guys, and um, God bless. I'll see you guys somewhere up the road. Thank you. You always give it to Clark for keeping it real. That was fabulous, awesome. By the way, a round of applause for all of the 2015 inductees to Colorado State Hall of Fame. This has been such a special night. I'm so honored and privileged to be back here with you guys. It was amazing to be able to hear from all of the inductees, not only to hear from them, but to see their highlight reels and to relive some of those moments and just get chills, it was just spectacular. So I just want to say thank you guys for that. So wonderful, again, a, a wonderful night. What a great, great place this is and they did a wonderful job decorating it. So congratulations to all of you guys who helped doing that. We really appreciate it. Um, we want to thank also the athletic department um, and we want to thank the RAAA. I want to make sure that I get all of those A's in there because it's very, very important. Um, the board of directors for their support for this amazing, amazing event. You guys are so awesome, so helpful in everything that we've needed from whenever we've needed it. You guys are so spectacular. So um, we want to thank you. Uh, I want to give a big end. Let's do this for, for Newell. Why don't we do this for you and for Hagen's? Why don't we all stand up again? Because you know what? It was so fun the first time. We got to sing the fight song. Newell, you're starting it off. You guys, thank you so much. Have a good night. Be safe. Go ahead.